in the opulent countryside villa. The passion of entrepreneur Sam was boiling over. The elderly businessman gestured wildly, arguing loudly with his favorite daughter. Do you know? Julie. This has gone out of control. It's simply madness. My beautiful and smart daughter wanting to marry an orphan in a wheelchair. Tell me. Are you out of your mind? Well. Try explaining this kind of happiness to me. Tell me why you're making life difficult for yourself, the girl responded excitedly, Dad. What nonsense is this? It's your fault he became disabled. Tell me. Don't you see him as a person anymore? You know how smart. Cultured. And kind he is. We fell in love at first sight and want to spend our lives together. I'm not a child anymore. I have a say. And you should consider that, Sam erupted in anger that I've always only thought about you. And now I see I was wrong. When you told me you didn't want to go to a prestigious law school but wanted to be a nurse. I accepted it. You became a nurse. And when I tried to help you land a job in an excellent private clinic. You started stuttering. Dissatisfied with me. And ran off to an ordinary hospital just for a meager salary. I felt hurt. But I somehow got over it. But now. You're trying to ruin me. Julie. Why are you so stubborn? Like a mule. Tell me. Do you realize what it's like to live with a disabled person? It's a headache. You'll just be taking care of him. He can't take care of himself. Why do you want this? He can't even provide for his family. What right do you have to live on a meager salary? Don't joke with me. Daughter. Don't be foolish. I oppose this. You're so beautiful. Boys turn heads. And there's no one else to choose from. Why make this desperate move? You know I'll never understand. Julie, Julie is determined not to give up. Firmly stating, Dad. I won't leave Mike no matter what. We're planning to get married. And we don't need any of your help. We can live on our own. You cannot measure everything and everyone by money and status. Something I'll never understand. My father just shook his head. Patted his chest. Then walked to his office. Poured himself a glass of brandy to calm his emotions. He picked up a photo of his late wife. Ross. As if having a conversation with a living person. And said to the picture. Ross. What should I do? Tell me. I can't get through to Julie. She always seeks to provoke me. Pretending to be mature. Wanting freedom and independence. She doesn't know what poverty looks like. Always daydreaming. An extremist. If you were here. Maybe you could talk sense into her. Maybe she'd listen to her mother. But I can't find common ground with her. She's full of sarcasm. Sensitive to everything. I've told her countless times about our struggles. Our story of living in shelters. Scraping by with meager wages. Mocked as ordinary engineers. When our bank collapsed in the 90s. We had to struggle through those tough years. We begged. Carried heavy burdens. And only through years of saving did I manage to buy the bankrupt bank and revive it. It's a pity you passed away. After all these years. It's just been you and Julie in my heart. No one else. How can I convince our stubborn daughter not to involve her future with a disabled person? I feel sorry for her. This fool. I sense my daughter will do things her way. So let her. Perhaps this is for the best. She'll live in such difficult circumstances. See reality. Appreciate everything I've given. And eventually leave her fiancé. The businessman spoke. Sighed heavily. Wiped away a tear cautiously. And carefully placed the photo back. Strangely. 
he felt a bit better that he loved his daughter immensely. She was his everything. That's why he reacted so sensitively to everything because every father wants the best for those they love, Julie sat in her room. Sobbing. Rereading her personal diary. A diary she had since third grade, this was the first entry, that they seated me next to the disgusting Carl in class. I can't stand him. He sticks his tongue out at me and pulls my braids. I told dad in the evening. He laughed so happily and told me he loves me very much. These kids are strange. I want to ask mom. But she's not here. I miss her so much. Almost don't remember her. Only her gentle voice and eyes. I know she loved me very much. Reading these sentences written in a child's handwriting again. She felt sadness once more. Julie's mother passed away when she was too due to pneumonia. All starting from a trivial cold. The girl only had fragmentary memories of her mother. Like frames from a movie. Such as her gentle voice. The scent of flowers. And the warm arms that hugged her deeply. That's all. Dad raised Julie alone. Loving her immensely. Giving all his time and money. Pouring all his efforts into his only blood. But he was always too strict. Expectations too high. He always checked her homework seriously. Didn't allow her to dress like modern young people. Instilled good taste and manners in her. He hoped Julie would grow up. Graduate from a prestigious university. And marry a successful young man from a respectable family or help him run his business so that when he passed away she could take over his bank but sam had never asked his daughter if she wanted all this sam was an authoritative figure believing that with his life experience he knew better than anyone how his daughter should live yet julie was quite the opposite of his expectations becoming remarkably different from a young age excessively kind excessively trusting of others she had always been interested in medicine. Refusing to hear about law or accounting as they were difficult subjects for her. Sam didn't give up. He hired the best tutors. Which certainly helped his daughter's academics but didn't instill in her a passion for precise sciences. It wasn't until her teenage years that Julie. Previously compliant with her father. Became stubborn. When considering higher education. She unexpectedly chose not to sit for law school entrance exams but smoothly passed medical school exams. Initially. Her father was furious, daughter. What a peculiar choice you've made. A banker's daughter wanting to become an ordinary nurse. Why this? It's a prestigious profession. If you wanted to become a doctor. Then study medicine, well. But being a lawyer would be better. Of course. Julie began to defend herself, okay. If I don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Why should I be ashamed? Can't you understand that everyone is different? Why do I have to conform to rules set by others? I want to live my life. Not someone else's. So. In your view. A banker and entrepreneur's daughter cannot become a nurse or a hairdresser. For instance. Due to social status reasons, Sam felt perplexed. Realizing he might have gone too far and offended his daughter. Replying more calmly that I'm sorry. Daughter. I think you're right. We should respect all professions. If you want to become a nurse. Then go ahead. Dear. I won't stop you. As long as you're happy. Julie enthusiastically pursued her studies. Thriving in the ward. Excelling in wound dressings and IVs more than anyone in her group. She graduated with honors. Obtained a diploma. And was assigned to a trauma ward in an ordinary hospital. Once again. This disappointed her father. After all. He had reserved a position for her in a renowned private clinic in town. Relying on connections. But this girl resolutely chose to make her own way. 
not relying on her father's million-dollar fortune. So she declined the position. Leaving the staff surprised upon hearing that the daughter of a banker was a new nurse here, what was she doing here? Couldn't her wealthy father find her a good position? At first, everyone was skeptical of Julie. But later, they found they were wrong because she performed her duties perfectly. She was unassuming. And unless you knew she was from an affluent family, you wouldn't guess. She dressed inconspicuously, kept her makeup simple, and often tied her hair in a bun. Julie had been a serious person from a young age. Not just because she lacked a mother in her adult life but also due to her father's strict guidance. She had no boyfriends. Only work. Believing that if fate allowed her to meet a soulmate, she would. Especially participating in clubs was meaningless to her. She had no friends because people her age only talked about fashion shows and new trends in clothing. Indulging in maturity. While Julie was out of place among them. She didn't enjoy all those social activities and sometimes had to accompany her father. Making her colleagues hesitant to become close friends with her. Not because Julie didn't dream of great love, of course. Like all girls. She wanted passionate kisses and romantic dates, but simply because no one caught her eye. That was it, but one day. Everything changed. Julie arrived at her post as usual. And the head nurse assigned her tasks, dot take the new boy in room 6 for an x-ray. Then bring me the results. Also. Prepare the routine appointment sheet. Julie set off to do these tasks. Opened the room door. And saw a young man of her age. With brown hair. Deeply sad gray eyes and a friendly, bright smile. He was muscular, wearing a lightweight jacket that revealed well-defined muscles underneath, appearing as though he accidentally ended up in a wheelchair. His athletic appearance didn't quite align, the girl smiled, are you Mike? I'm Julie. Let's head to the x-ray room. I'll help you, she intended to push the wheelchair. But the boy straightened up. Facing her despite the painful expression dot don't treat me as if I'm disabled. I can manage. Tell me where to go. I'll do it myself, Julie extended her hand, well done. I respect that. So. Don't pity yourself. Enrich your life despite everything, thus. They met and started conversing. Almost from the first minute. Not only did they feel a connection. But love bloomed between the two young people. Julie admired Mike's resilience despite being in a hell of pain. He read a lot. Sought job opportunities remotely. The boy narrated his life. Which hadn't been easy from the start, you know. Julie. I'm not an easy boyfriend. You know. You're a banker's daughter. And I am alone. Without a family. My irresponsible mother abandoned me in the hospital and ran away. That's how it was. The orphanage became my second home for many years. If you knew how unpleasant and terrible it was. Although they didn't mistreat me. We had an exemplary orphanage. But even so. It wasn't my home. I longed to be hugged by a mother. Just like in the movies. To have a family and the comfort of a home to know someone needed me. In the orphanage. I was interested in sports. So. After graduating. I entered a sports education college. They gave me a dormitory. But it was in a terrible condition. Just like my own home. It was impossible to live there. So. I rented an apartment and worked part-time as a coach at the gym. Life gradually started getting better. And then I had an accident. While crossing the intersection. A baby suddenly rushed out. His mother was chatting on the phone. Not realizing he had let go of her hand. A jeep was speeding. And I realized that one second later. The child would disappear. 
So. I dashed under the wheels. Miraculously. The baby was unharmed. But now I'm disabled. After multiple surgeries and long rehabilitation. The doctor's efforts were in vain. I can't walk anymore. I'm not strong. Nor am I depressed or hopeless. But don't cry. I have to learn to live with this version of myself. So I strive to lead a life like anyone else. Julie supported the boy as much as possible and reached an agreement with a doctor to begin treating him. After a period of massages and exercises, Mike's pain noticeably eased. And now he could move his wheelchair himself. Mike deeply loved Julie. Was grateful for her care. Her radiant blue eyes and cheerful laughter deeply moved him. And he longed to start life anew. However, deep within him, something unimaginable happened. The boy struggled internally because on one hand, he wanted most to spend the rest of his life with his fiancée since. Besides her, he had no one else. But on the other hand, he realized it would be a burden for her. After all, without external help, he couldn't manage on his own and practically couldn't earn much due to his disability. Julie was a banker's daughter. Accustomed to a comfortable life, could she adapt to a modest life? Maybe we should break up. He wouldn't want her unhappy. But could Julie be happy with another healthy person? Even the thought of losing her was unbearable. And he would have nothing worth living for. He tried to talk to her sincerely about this. But Julie refused to listen to any explanations. Passionately kissed him. And whispered her love. Not noticing his illness. She genuinely believed in it. Therefore. She told her father everything. Hoping he would understand and accept her decision, but as usual. There was still some discomfort within her. No one at work understood this girl. Everyone thought she was crazy for caring for a disabled person when she was young and wealthy. It was too crazy. But Julie was very stubborn from a young age. After speaking with her father, she realized that even though her father didn't accept her decision, he had come to terms with IT than so. She went to Mike's room and joyfully announced that I'm why dear. I told my father everything. Although it wasn't an easy conversation, he now knows everything. And in three days. We can go to the civil registry office to register our marriage. So. We will rent an apartment. I have found a cheap house in the suburbs. We will live like a real family. We'll have a simple wedding within a month. We don't need to show off, the boy. Full of joy and anxiety. Answered softly that I love you. Julie. Thank heavens for letting me know you. I promise never to hurt you. I will love you and hope you'll be happy with me. But I'm very worried you'll tire of this life. It won't be easy. I can't hold you. Nor can I maintain your lifestyle properly. Won't you regret your choice? Julie hugged her fiancé and gently kissed him, Mike. When I first saw you. I didn't even notice the wheelchair. You are young, intelligent, and the most loyal person. I don't need anyone else. I just need you. Hardships aren't scary for me. We will overcome them together. I believe that so. They did just that. Julie rented a wonderful and cozy little house with a low porch so that Mike could go for walks. They began living there. Julie's father remained neutral. He still couldn't understand his daughter but decided not to intervene in her difficult life. At least for the time being. He thought perhaps in a few months. His daughter would fuss and come back home. Leaving the poor disabled person behind. But he couldn't have been more wrong, Julie and Mike lived happily together because both disliked noise. Preferring a quiet and harmonious life. They had their own world where they were very happy, not caring about what others thought. Julie continued working as a nurse. 
Although the commute was longer now, Mike decided not to burden his wife further. So they decided to purchase a second-hand car specially designed for disabled people. With a driver's license, Mike decided to seek work at a taxi company. Initially hesitant. Given the company's boss doubted Mike's abilities. When he started earning more than others, he was officially hired. Despite his constant headaches, he no longer felt inferior. Now, Mike proudly handed over his earnings to his wife. Julie's father wanted to help him by offering a temporary position in his company. But Mike immediately refused without hesitation. He didn't want to endure curious gazes and gossip or rely on his wealthy father-in-law, Sam even began to respect them. Occasionally visiting and starting to interact with Mike. Seeing his genuine love for Julie. Who welcomed him with the same radiance as she did in her childhood. So. The businessman thought, Julie is extraordinary. She doesn't seek a life of wealth and happiness but finds joy being with Mike. That's what matters most. Mike's a good guy. Let them live their own lives, several months passed. And the newlyweds continued to get along well. In the afternoons. They enjoyed sitting in the yard under the pear tree. Envisioning the future. Julie was very keen on having children. But Mike worried about the implications of his spinal cord injury. However. He didn't voice his concerns. Silently praying to God for a child. A miracle happened, Julie became pregnant. Realizing it when she started vomiting and feeling heaviness in her lower abdomen. The young woman was thrilled and decided to host a celebratory dinner. She baked a cabbage cake and cooked a delicious stir-fry, just as her husband was returning home from work. When he entered, he caught the scent of freshly baked food, kissed his wife warmly, and mischievously asked, sweetheart, what holiday is it today? Did I forget something, curiously? Julie replied that it's another holiday. But right now, it's a surprise. Wash up and come to the table. I'll tell you, Mike. Relishing the food. Walked up to Julie and said let me speak first. I've had enough of pretending. I've been promoted. And I'm an example for others now. They know I'm not lazy but hardworking. Your husband is a good man, Julie embraced Mike. Kissed him. And said, not just a good husband. But the best. You are my pillar. One. Two. Three. She handed him the test stick. And as he examined the two red lines. He softly said to Julie, Julie. My dear. You're pregnant. How joyful this is. We're going to have a child. Come. My star. My son. This is such an unexpected joy. I'll have to work extra. We need to save money and get everything for the baby. Set up the baby's room, Julie smiled and said that it's still early. Your belly isn't even showing. And you're already thinking about preparing a room for the baby. I'm also very happy. I have to call my dad. He's been waiting for an heir. I couldn't become a banker. Maybe my son will follow in my dad's footsteps. On that fateful night, Julie, exhausted, couldn't speak to Mike. And it was late. He hadn't finished work yet. Everything inside her collapsed. Her soul tormented by anguish. Then she received a call from the police. Informing her of a horrific car accident her husband had on his way back to the parking lot. He died on the spot. According to the officers. Mike suddenly fell ill while driving. Lost control. Accelerated. And hit a utility pole. They offered condolences. But Julie couldn't hear more. Her phone slipped from her hand. And she stood there. Unable to move or believe what had happened, the funeral of her beloved husband completely shattered the poor widow. She wept incessantly for 24 hours. 
clutching onto his shirt. Still making strong tea and sandwiches for him in the morning. She was on the brink of madness. Suddenly. She heard the sound of the door lock being opened, her dear husband had returned. She dropped the shirt and lunged toward him. And everything between them was over, eventually. Julie fell ill. Experiencing severe bleeding. The poor woman managed to call her father. Whispering, Dad, call an ambulance. My stomach hurts a lot. Hurry. Come quickly. Then she fell into darkness. Sam hurriedly took Julie to the clinic. Staying with her for a month. Praying day after day. Hoping God would bless his daughter and grandchild. During this time. Julie's pregnancy was at risk. And even the doctors didn't offer her any hope, however. A miracle happened. The crisis passed. Thanks to complex treatments and sedatives. Julie calmed down. She feared losing this child because it was a part of Mike. She loved the child dearly. Even at this time. So. The woman controlled herself. No longer crying day and night. Even though neither her father nor her husband persuaded her. And her husband went to work not to dwell on thoughts far from home. And not to be afraid of spending nights alone. She found a faithful friend, a dog. Felix that I saw an ad on the internet, that whose dog is this? Call me. Undoubtedly. I'll take it to a good home. Julie looked at the photo. Seeing a pair of eyes that didn't seem like a dog's but rather a person abused. Which was hard for her to believe. However. Tears welled in her eyes. Leaving a deep impression on her. She hurried to rescue the sad dog, Felix was too thin. All of its ribs protruded. And its stomach was touching its back. Fortunately. It licked Julie's hand. Eagerly licking the food in the bowl. As time passed. The dog gradually gained weight. Not in days but in hours. It became round. With shiny fur. Now a playful dog. Enjoying running around in the park. Holding a ball or a stick. Then the moment of birth arrived. A small but highly anticipated baby was born. Sam adored his grandson. And Julie often took the child to visit his grandfather. Who held the baby and played the baby's rattle. Cherishing the moment that Julie's daughter smiled and said, Dad. You've spoiled my son. As soon as I put him in his crib. Sean understood. But when I pick him up. He gets quiet. Tomorrow. You'll be with him. I'll treat him as my pet. He's gotten as big as me. And I'm afraid I won't be able to push the stroller, Sam replied joyfully. Of course. Taking care of Sean is a joy for me. Look. He looks a bit like me from the side. How adorable. Julie admired her child. But she naturally felt sadness and missed Mike. She often visited his grave. Silently speaking to him. Telling him about her child's growth and everything happening in the world. Point six months had passed. Sean was trying to crawl. Sitting steadily in the walker. Julie lived for her little one. Not wanting him to see her sadness. Point one day. She took Felix for a walk as usual. Then dropped the child off to play at his grandfather's. Julie leisurely walked the dog. Felix frolicking nearby. Suddenly. She heard groans. Screams. And a commotion in the distance. Julie cautiously approached and saw three young people attacking a homeless person. Kicking them several times and loudly shouting that if you come back again. We'll bury you here. This land is ours. As they grew more agitated. Increasing their force, Julie couldn't take it anymore and shouted, stop. How shameful. Three against one. I'll call the police. One of the thugs disdainfully glanced at Julie. Muttering, get lost. Coward. Or you'll be next. 
mind your own business. As long as you're safe. However, Julie was a resilient girl who wouldn't back down easily. Suddenly, she clapped her hands, calling out loudly, Felix, come here. A huge dog rushed toward the three individuals, growling, barking, attempting to bite them, revealing its sharp fangs. The attackers realized it wasn't a joke and quickly retreated. Hastily leaving the scene, Julie petted the dog, good boy. My guardian. Good boy. Here's a tasty treat for you. Felix contentedly gobbled up the treat and happily trotted off for a walk, Julie helped the homeless man stand up. Taking out wet wipes from her bag and handing them to him, take it. There's blood on your face and mouth. Why did they attack you? They're not human. The homeless man wiped his face and hands. Saying, thank you for stepping in. A frail girl saved an adult man from a gang of hoodlums, your dog is beautiful. A German Shepherd. I was collecting bottles in the wrong place. Now the trash bins are separated. And I used to pick bottles there. But now there are many kids and young people drinking there. Look. This bag is full. It took me three days to collect these. But I won't do it anymore. I don't want to become a disabled person. I think I should go now. Thank you again, Julie looked at the homeless man. His teeth were white. His face clean. Clearly not resembling a homeless person. Oh my. That's strange. She couldn't bear it anymore and asked that I'm Julie. What about you? If it's not a secret. How did you end up on the streets? You don't look like a homeless person. The man replied that I don't know who I am or where I'm from. It's the saddest thing. I woke up lying by a hotel drain. A ragged woman bandaging my head with strips of cloth. I felt very uncomfortable. Sick. Trying to remember something. But nothing. Just a blank slate. Mary told me that people found me in the sewer. Unconscious. They thought I was dead. Barely had a pulse. They pitted me. Brought me to their home. Warmed me up. And bandaged the wound on my head with bandages. Thanks to them. Though they were homeless. They had kind hearts. I went to the police station. Asking for help with identification or fingerprinting to find out my identity. But they laughed at me. Kicked me out. Telling me. Get lost. Hobo. Don't bother us. You're not welcome here. They decided not to bother with a homeless man. It's been a year now. And recently. A secondhand goods market moved to another shop. We helped them move things. And they gave us these clothes as a token of appreciation. At first. I felt sick. Embarrassed. Wandered around. Collecting those bottles. But nothing changed later. I got used to it. Anyway. No passport. No other way out. You're not a person. You don't exist. It kills your spirit. The drifters call me Harry. But I don't know if it's true. They said it's the name I repeated when I was rambling. So. It's not a pleasant topic, Julie. The young girl. Sighed heavily, your situation must be worse than mine. Do you know what? Harry. I want to help you. Let me take a picture of you with my phone and post it on all social networks. Maybe someone is looking for you. If someone is searching for you and you don't know it. It would be great if I could help. Sit up straight. Give me a smile but where would anyone find me dot if someone shows up? The man shrugged, they can find me at the heating station. The people there know me. They'll find me, okay. I'll go. Thank you. Julie. You're a kind person, after saying goodbye. 
The young girl had almost reached the end of the park when suddenly she stopped as if rooted to the spot. Then. She turned around and headed back. Calling out loudly for her dog. Felix, come with me. Find Harry. Okay. Her mind and heart were in conflict, she thought, why am I going back? Why do I care about this Harry? I've helped him enough. Sean is a stranger. But my heart is pleading and begging. You can't do this. This person has issues. He's not a homeless man. You can tell. We need to help him regain his memories. Bring him back to life. But I'm powerless in this confined room. It won't do any good back on the bench. Harry sat like a statue. Rubbing his head and injured leg. Julie called out to him, Harry. Look at me. I've been thinking. Come to my home. I want you to visit me. I rent a small house in the city outskirts. There's an annex in the yard. It's not a hotel. But there's a sofa and a table. I'll get you sheets. You can stay with me for a while. We'll try to find your relatives, the man stared at Julie in disbelief, are you serious? Thank you. Julie. But I don't have money. Aren't you afraid to bring a stranger into your home? Will your family mind, Julie replied that I live with my son. It's been like this since my husband passed away. So. No one objects. What should I be afraid of? I have a dog. Felix. Almost the same size as me. Felix. Come here. It will tear anyone's throat out for me. Let's go. Harry, Harry felt extremely happy and followed her. He still couldn't believe his luck. He was tired of aimless wandering. Thrilled at every corner. Julie arranged for Sean to stay at her annex and prepared clean sheets and some belongings of her late husband for him. Serving him piping hot soup. The man ate hastily. Thanking the host continuously, tastes really good. Thank you so much. Dear. I never expected someone would lend a hand. How can I repay you? I don't want to be a freeloader. It makes me feel very embarrassed, Julie waved her hand. Oh. Come on. You're not a scammer. You can stay here as long as you want. Just help fix the yard. I'd really appreciate it. I can't take care of the child right now. Okay. I must go. I need to feed Sean. Good night, the young mother stayed with her son all night until he fell asleep. Then sat at the computer and sent Harry's photo to all social networks. Writing, attention, don't overlook someone's misfortune. This person has lost their memory. Perhaps someone is looking for or knows him. Reply via phone or email. Help find a home and family. A week passed. And Julie and Harry became good friends. They talked a lot and shared many things. Whenever the man took the baby out for a walk. He made the baby laugh and got along well with Felix. The dog. Harry tidied up the yard. Painted the bench. And fixed the fireplace in the old bathroom in the courtyard. Now he lit it and enjoyed the warmth inside. Surprisingly. Julie felt like being with Harry was as if they had been living together for half a lifetime or had known each other since childhood. They were extremely comfortable in each other's company, suddenly. One day. Without any prior notice. Julie's father arrived. She was even a bit frightened. Thinking that things were about to start, why are you sheltering a homeless man? There are other issues. How long will you disgrace us? But to her surprise. Her father began speaking from the doorway. Hi. Daughter. Listen to me. I happened to see the advertisement you posted online. I know this person. Do you know where he is? It's crucial, Julie started stammering, Dad. There's a story. But it's not over yet, when Harry saw the businessman. He felt a bit awkward and went over to greet him, good afternoon. 
I'm Harry. You might know me. I'm sure I've seen you somewhere. But I don't know where. Which is terrible. When you lose your memory. It's terrible, Sean shook his hand and said dot of course. We know each other. We frequently meet during work. Your name is Sean. You're the owner of several restaurants. By the way. You borrowed money from me to help with your project. Your parents have been looking for you. They are devastated. There are rumors that you went on a business trip and disappeared without a trace, why are you looking at me like that? Don't you remember? The guest rubbed his forehead. Closed his eyes. Trying to recall something. He murmured that it's tormenting. I can't concentrate to recall what I've seen. Do I have a family? That's great. Now we can go to my parents' place, please. I can only imagine what they've been through. Maybe when I see them. Everything will come back to me. Sam agreed and took the guest to the grand estate. On the way. The man kept thanking Julie for her kindness. Expressing admiration for her, Sam. You've raised an incredible person. Kind and understanding. You've raised an incredible man. Friendly and gentle. If it weren't for your daughter. I wouldn't even know who I am, the businessman smiled sadly, yes. My daughter is gentle. Kind. Sometimes even too much. She's not like me. She's been like her departed mother since she was little. She doesn't even let me kill spiders. Or even flies. But her fate isn't enviable. She got married. Her husband tragically passed away. And now she's raising a child alone. Refusing my financial help. Only allowing me to look after her grandson and love him. So. I have only one source of happiness. Sean. But Julie is so beautiful. Intelligent. And frugal. I hope she has a good husband to support and provide for her. It's tough for a single woman. But I won't last forever. Time waits for no one that this is the estate. We're here. John. Come on. Let your parents be happy. The man's heart raced anxiously, what if I still can't recall anything? Will I really see my mother and father? Oh. I'm so worried. A charming old woman opened the door. Glanced at the guests. Screamed. And fainted. John picked her up and carried her inside. Suddenly. A flash struck his mind. There was the scent of his mother. Her touch. Her curly hair. An elderly man with glasses ran out. Saw John. And clutched his heart tightly, John. My child. It's you. I can hardly believe it. Alzi. What happened? Oh God. I'll get some ammonia, Lissy. Are you awake? The elderly woman finally regained consciousness and immediately grabbed John's frail. Trembling ARM.MY child. My dear. You're still alive. I felt it. You didn't die. Despite everyone around me making me believe otherwise. Where did you go? Dear child. How much we missed you. How much we longed for you. Let me kiss you, John knelt down. Embracing his mother tightly. Running his fingers through her hair. Softly saying, Mom. I remember. I remember everything. From the moment I was a child and you carried me home. Suddenly. Everything became clear to me. Do you remember the song about clouds that you used to sing to me? It was such a beautiful. Tender song. Do you remember how you comforted me when the kids in the yard bullied me? Dad even taught me how to fight that he decided to visit his daughter. See his grandson. And tell her everything. Julie was feeding Sean vegetable puree. The child incessantly tapping the table with a spoon. 
She was finding various ways to make the child eat happily, Julie saw her father and sighed, Dad. I know I did something foolish. Inviting a stranger and a street wanderer to stay with me. Don't morally blackmail me. Your daughter is just a silly, naive girl. A shame to the family. What can I do? Sam approached. Smiling. Took her hand. And softly said, Julie. I'm not here to blame you. Dear. I'm here to tell you that you are not foolish at all. You are very special. There aren't many people like you. Think about how you helped John and his parents reunite. You lent a hand to a good person. You're an amazing girl. And I love you very much. You know, Julie finally heard these precious words of support and understanding. Words she had been lacking for a long time. She hugged her father tightly, thank you. Dad. For finally understanding me. It must be acknowledged that not everything is measured by wealth and money. Look at Julie. She was once wealthy. Then became a homeless person. But who cares now? I've always done things according to the voice in my heart. And it has never let me down. I love you too. Dad. All right. Why don't we sit down for dinner? I made your favorite sour cream soup for a long time. She and her father hadn't sat together so genuinely, finally. The wall of misunderstandings separating the two was broken down. Julie excitedly talked about her new friend. Her eyes sparkling. Cheeks blushing, her father sensed it all and cautiously asked that I can see you like John. Are you falling for him? Julie blushed even more. Lowering her head that I don't know. I just met him. And I have a child from another man. It's been less than a year since Mike passed away. So. It's not possible. But you're right. I like John. Being with him feels easy. Like we're old friends, Sam sighed. Holding his daughter's hand. Looking into her eyes. And said, you once told me that you always listen to your heart. Don't blame yourself for Mike's death. It's not your fault. I've known John for a long time. He is an honest. Kind person. And a smart businessman with foresight. I can't decide if you and he get along. But he's the kind of person I'd be willing to have as a son-in-law. I wouldn't say these things as a father. But as a man. I tell you, if you love someone. Even if they have three children. It's not an obstacle. So. Don't be troubled by sorrow. Don't live in memories. Relax. Enjoy life. As your father. I will always support you, Julie smiled and said, thank you. Dad. Thank you for your comforting words. Now I feel like we've become that family we once were, John resumed his identity. Took charge of his company again. He had to catch up on work. Fully immerse himself in it. But all these struggles made him happy. He remembered everything, then. On an ominous day. He went for negotiations. It was a night of heavy rain. A young woman. Shaking and trembling from the rain and wind. Stood at the roadside. Shyly extending her hand. Hoping someone would stop. The man felt compassion for her and slowed down the car that I want to give you a ride if it's in my direction. I'll take you. He opened the car door. The stranger sweetly smiled. Then suddenly sprayed him with pepper spray. And a gang of thugs rushed in. Later. He woke up in darkness. In a homeless gathering. John tried to draw a facial sketch. Seeking investigators help. But a whole year passed. And those thugs had long gone. This man started visiting Julie more frequently. They often stayed late. Played with Sean. Watched movies. Hiding their feelings became increasingly difficult. They were drawn to each other like magnets. Point one day. John went to Julie's house and said that I in fact. 
I remembered something else. Or rather. My colleagues reminded me. I love riding motorcycles and even have one in the garage. So. I have a suggestion for you. Would you like to go for a ride together? I'm inviting you. We can drop Sean off at Sam's place. Julie's eyes sparkled that I'd love to. I haven't been out much since my child was born. So I really want to go out. Honestly. I've never ridden a motorcycle. At the appointed time. John arrived to pick up Julie. He was wearing appropriate protective gear and a motorcycle jacket. Looking impressive. But when he saw Julie. He was stunned. She was wearing fitted denim overalls. Stunning and her cheeks flushed that I want to hold her in my strong arms forever, this trip was unforgettable. Driving. Wind blowing on their faces. Speed. Adrenaline. With a strong man by her side. Julie hugged his waist tightly. Pressing her body against his. From that moment on. She felt an extraordinary happiness, John decided to give his beloved a surprise. Taking her to her favorite place in the outskirts of the city. They climbed rocks for a while and eventually reached a temporary lookout point. What a beautiful place. They could see the magnificent view of the entire city. The sparkling dome of the church. The murmuring fir trees in the distance. Like something out of a fairy tale. A massive red sun was setting on the horizon. A spectacular sight worth admiring, Julie screamed with joy. Ah. 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 The echoes reverberated. John embraced her from behind. Holding her tightly. Then took out a beautiful box from his pocket. Gazing into Julie's eyes, Julie. My dear. I've loved you almost from the first second. You're different to me. Special. Irreplaceable. Please be my wife. Forever and ever. I'll take care of Sean as I would my own child. I'll never hurt him. I can't be without you, tears of happiness welled up in Julie's eyes as she replied that I love you too. Maybe it's wrong. But I can't help it, they passionately kissed. Everything became blurry. And it felt like the earth disappeared from under their feet, the couple began their life together. Julie moved into John's mansion. Quickly bonded with his parents. And cared for Sean as her own child. Life went on as usual. The child grew up and was now three years old. Julie hardly ever argued with John. She was absolutely happy. They thought there wouldn't be any more surprises or changes in life. But one day. Little Sean was playing in the yard with his grandfather. When the child chased after a cat and fell while running. He suffered a severe leg injury. Blood gushing out. There seemed to be something wrong with the container. And everyone was worried. The fearful parents immediately rushed him to the children's hospital. The doctor hurriedly arrived and took the child away. Julie silently shed tears in the corridor. Feeling lost. John tried to comfort her, everything will be fine. They're stitching the wound now. Our baby will be okay soon. Please don't cry. And don't blame yourself for anything, the doctor said, but the wound is deep. The child has lost a lot of blood. A blood transfusion would be best. Then added that we've confirmed Sean's blood type is O and now we'll look for blood, John exclaimed that no need to look. Time is running out. I and he have the same blood type. I'll donate blood, the doctor lightly tapped his forehead that you're the father. Why didn't I think of that? Come with me, Julie felt puzzled. As a doctor. She knew that only close relatives could possibly match in blood type and phenotype. But how could this be, everything went smoothly. The child recovered. But the idea of this kinship didn't sit well with Julie. So. She decided to conduct an experiment. She asked John. This may sound like nonsense. But it's true. I want to do a genetic test. 
Take samples from you and your son. Just to make sure. I mean. Their blood being completely compatible. How is that possible, John laughed, Julie. Don't think too much. I love Sean. Of course. As if he were my son. And we have the same blood type. It's too wonderful. But both of us know I'm not his biological father. That's impossible. But if you want. I don't mind. Just calm down. Stop worrying, when the results came out. Everyone at home was shocked. John and Sean were actually related. But how could that be? Determined Julie was keen on uncovering the truth. She asked her father to participate in the investigation. Hired the best detectives. And they unraveled the truth about Mike's late mother and Julie's husband, the results revealed that Mike's mother was named Mary and gave the child her surname. However. The child's father was unknown. Further investigation by the detectives uncovered that Mary had lived with an elderly couple. Strict and displeased when she became pregnant. They forced her to give the child to an orphanage. She attempted to escape after refusing procedures at the hospital and later died due to complications without receiving treatment. This cruel retaliation led to the unbearable suffering of her parents. Who soon passed away. And the family lineage vanished. Leaving behind only an orphan, Mike, Julie disclosed everything to her family during a gathering. Saying that IT all makes sense. But Sean is connected to this. Yet he doesn't recognize this Mary and her parents. I don't understand. John's mother was also perplexed. Shrugged her shoulders. But John's father. Restless in his chair. Coughed and began to speak that I know the answers to all the questions. Mary was once my lover. We had a relationship. But soon after. We fought and separated because I discovered her infidelity. We never met again. And I had no idea about her fate or her pregnancy. I met my Lees and spent my life with her. When you think about it carefully. Everything fits. Your late husband. Mike. And our John are likely half-siblings from the same father. So Sean matches John's blood type. Hence. Sean is our true grandson and John's nephew, Julie was utterly astounded. Finding it all hard to believe. Like a plot in a movie, now I understand why I felt drawn to John. After meeting him in the park that day. I wanted to leave. Even said goodbye once. Then came back. My heart had made the decision for me. Said Julie. John was equally shocked, poor Mike was an orphan and later became disabled. No one helped him. Julie. I can't believe we've been living happily. And we could have raised and cared for him. Been his friend. John's father sighed, this is my fault. If Mary had told me she was pregnant. I wouldn't have abandoned the child. Not like the way I was brought up. But I never knew. I have to go to Mike's grave to repent. Although it's too late. After all. He was my son, their family grew even closer now. Truly becoming the closest and most beloved to one another. Julie had just returned from maternity leave and resumed work. Her colleagues didn't mock her. They knew who her husband was. Instead. They tried to please her. Everyone knew this cheerful nurse had never been afraid of anything. As she regained consciousness. She said with a pale face that I don't know. Honestly. I feel a bit confused. And my legs don't seem to respond properly. What happened, the head nurse sternly remarked. Don't joke about this. This is your medical instruction sheet. Go for the examination. Hopefully. It's not something serious. But it's essential not to take it lightly. Julie felt extremely uneasy. Even shedding tears. Thinking, just as life was becoming beautiful. With a beloved husband and a healthy child. Now some illness has struck, however. An hour later. 
she happily dashed back to the office. Waving a piece of paper. When the nurses inquired what happened. The head nurse took the paper. Reread it. And sighed, well. Before greetings. Another maternity leave. So many staff to document. The girls congratulated her. And that evening at home. Julie lightened the mood, all right. My dear ones. Don't let the grandparents relax. They've just dropped off one grandson at daycare. And another is on the way. Let's celebrate Aeon and me. It's another boy. Already 16 weeks. She nearly fell off her chair. Suddenly stood up. And hugged Julie. Almost with tears of joy, thank you. Darling. I've always dreamed of having a child. Don't think I'll neglect Sean. He's also part of my family. Having two kids is fantastic, Julie chuckled, then what am I going to do? How will I handle this football team? Everyone began discussing how to prepare and organize, Julie immediately called her father, Dad. Do you want an heir? Another one. I'm pregnant again. It's another boy. What do you think, Sam chuckled in response that I'm happy for you. Daughter. Really happy for you. Truly. One becomes two. We'll be stronger. Don't worry. We are one family. At night. Julie and John held each other. Contemplating how unpredictable their lives were. A brief encounter. Seemingly fleeting on the surface. Destined by fate to become a powerful family filled with love. It's not an exaggeration to say that God's plans are always better than ours.